Hey, you're watching Palm Beach Rocks, and I'm your host, Roxana Sella. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you tonight. It's summer, and that means great movies and a very cool place to be. And tonight, we're giving you a sneak peek at some of those movies and the great stars that make those films great. So, I hear you close the deal. What's that commission, about 80K? 84. 84,000, that should just about cover your debt. No, no, don't do that to me. Jim, that's my year, that's my nut, man. It is not yours. Jim, I need this money. My son blew up a pool at school today. Sam, I'd like to talk to you about your father's estate. He left you this. Your shaving kit. $150,000. I'm supposed to give to some woman and kid I've never even met. Record producer Jerry Harper is survived by his wife and son. It's official. I don't exist. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for being on our show, Palm Beach Rocks. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You know, let's start off right away with the new film by DreamWorks, People Like Us. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing show. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. I did, I did. What drew you to your part? Uh, I play Frankie. She is a, a struggling single mom. Um, and, you know, I saw my sister was a single mom of a son about the same age as the boy in, in this film. and. I drew a lot of inspiration from watching her with my nephew, and um, and also I just love how much of a survivor Frankie is. She really appealed to me in that way, and and then the theme of the movie overall appealed to me. You know, this is a film about a brother and sister who find each other um, in, as adults, and you know I really just love the idea that we don't get to choose our family, but we really do get to choose if we like them. <laughs> right, and you know a lot of this was true. Yeah, this, this film, Alex Kurtzman, the writer-director, um, he went to a party when he was 30 years old and a woman came up to him and said, hey, I'm your sister that you didn't know you had. And uh, his, his dad had a second secret family. And, um, you know, it's a really interesting way to look at a parent through the lenses of both the child that he left behind and the child that he was with his whole life. And, um, you know, to have those two experiences come together in this film and, and uh, what, what, what we expect and what we think of, of our parents. Yeah, right. You know, I loved it because it was a drama, but yet there was a lot of comedy, and I thought yeah. that really came out in your personality. <laughs> Thank I you. I thought that was great. So, you know, you've done such a great body of work. What are some of your favorite things that you've done? Well, my favorite character, frankly, was Miri Linky and Zach and Miri make a porno. Uh, oh, you're right. <laughs> I really loved, um, you know, it's I, I don't often get to fall in love in a film, and I really got to fall in love um, as Miri with my, my co-star, Seth Rogen, and, you know, it's an amazing, falling in love is a truly amazing experience, a really fun thing to make a movie about, and I don't get to do that very often. I really loved her. She really was in my heart. Aw, and I loved you on 30 Rock, too, so. <laughs> Thank you, yes. Avery Jessup is a force to be reckoned with. Yes, truly. Well, we'll have to see if that doesn't come back. Right? <laughs> I hear good things. I hear good rumors. Now, you also have a production company with your husband. Is there anything you want to share with us? Anything up I do my production company, Brownstone Production. We just produced a movie called Pitch Perfect, uh, which is a comedy set in the world of competitive collegiate a cappella, and it stars a bunch of young, amazing actors. Anna Kendrick, the Oscar nominee, is at the heart of the film, and uh, we surrounded her with a bunch of really fun characters. It's a very funny movie. It comes out October 5th. Oh, wow, great. And so many other things I, I read that you're working on. That's just an amazing thing, and you are one busy actress. <laughs> and we love you, so thanks, and I'm looking forward to the movie. It should be coming out any day now. Yeah, June 29th. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Did you tell her everything you know? I don't know how. Maybe we could both start trying to be... Be people. <laughs> Polo Gear is the official sporting goods line for the Sport of Kings, carrying a wide range of products from custom helmets and saddles to everyday sportswear, including a great line of Polo Girl clothing. Polo Gear has everything you need to play the game of polo. For over four decades, the people have lived under the rule of a tyrant who denies them their most basic human rights. 
the time has come for him to step aside. We must keep on with the NATO mission and bring him to justice. I am for free press, fair elections, and equal rights for women. <laughs> I can't say that. On your mark. Get set. How are you doing, Roxana? Hey, Jason, great, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Great, we are so happy to have you here on Palm Beach Rocks. Sure. Now, you have been in a variety of movies and TV series, The Life and Time of Tim, Baby Mama, Parks and Recreations, Enlightened, and I could go on. Please do, <laughs> please do, let's go through them all. Oh, so tell us about Dictator. Uh, so the dictator is the new Sasha Baron Cohen movie, and he's playing uh, kind of a dictator of a kind of uh, North African oil-rich country, and I'm his nuclear scientist, uh, like uh, uh, trying to build his weapons of mass destruction. But uh, very quickly in the movie, uh, we both kind of are you know lose power and are basically almost homeless, living in New York, trying to trying to help get him back into power, and it's kind of like a you know a big comedy about him falling in love for the first time and you know he and I trying to help him get back into power against his enemy who's played by Sir Ben Kingsley it's a, it's a really funny movie but you kind of play the straight guy yes absolutely and now i have to say a lot of this has to be improv i mean some of the movies that of course you all have worked on are not always scripted so maybe you could share a little of that with us well, so yeah, this was, you know, like there was a great script, uh, terrific writers, uh, Berg Schaefer Mandel are their names, and then also Ant Hines and Dan Mazur and others. Like Sasha surrounds himself with a really kind of impressive group of writers who've been working with him from Borat and Bruno and Ali G and all these guys who kind of are his, are his writing staff, uh, wrote a great script, really hilarious. Uh, but then once we would get into shooting with Larry Charles, the director, we would, you know, we would shoot the script uh, as it was. And then once we did that, we would kind of diverge and explore different ideas and try and find funnier jokes or different setups and just improvise a lot, you know, which was for me like really exciting. I uh, know. I can't even imagine what some of the outtakes were like, your bloopers. I mean, it must have been just crazy completely outrageous like I really I really hope they put a lot of it on the DVD just because there is so much stuff that obviously could not fit in a, in a 80 whatever minute movie it is uh, there's so much stuff that we did that was so funny now how was it working with the infamous Sasha Baron Cohen oh it was great it was exciting you know he's somebody for me that since I started doing comedy uh, you know in the late 90s you know I was always very aware of uh, whether it was from the Ali G show that he was doing or when he started doing that show here on HBO, you know, all the way through the movies. He's somebody that I've watched for years and thought was a genius. So to work with him was kind of amazing. Well, is he ever out of character? Oh, sure. Yeah, no, he is. You know, I mean, when we're shooting during the day, not so much. You know, he kind of stays in it. You know, that's kind of his process. But, you know, during lunch or before work or after work, no, he's like a totally normal, ordinary person. I love being an American. Illa wahwani about low for which Michelle Empire State Building. Ah, Rabbit Walla said, but I said that I saw a shine of a Statue of Liberty. I was. Oh, no, no, no! Drop it to the floor, make me water. Tell me about Meridian. We did evil, unspeakable things. We opened a dark door, and the devil stepped in. Are you a gunslinger? That's just heading out west to look for work on the railroad. Hey, Rocks. Rocks. Hey, I am so happy to have you here on Palm Beach Rocks. Oh, we're happy to be here. Thanks for having us. How you doing? Good. Now, you guys are in this awesome movie, and it's coming out on DVD. Can you share a little bit with us? Yeah, well, the, the television show is called Hell on Wheels, and it's and it's on AMC, the DVD and Blu-ray is out right now. But the show itself is just a show that is really like about the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, which is really the building of an American dream, and how all these different cultures come together 
it's based on an uh, actual piece of history. You know, the framework is the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, which is really our, our first foothold towards becoming a superpower. And it was, it was, it was made by just a handful of guys in the field who took this idea to build a track across the entire United States, which everybody said was impossible. And uh, and they did it. And it was a group of guys who literally had been trying to kill each other a few months before in the Civil War. And so there's your immediate conflict. <laughs> Now, when you two decided to, to do this movie, it's, it's this TV show, it's so different. Did you kind of question whether or not you really wanted to do it, or were you gung-ho right away? Are you kidding me? No, I, sure. I was, I was that six-year-old kid who had the, the, the white cowboy hat and the plastic sheriff's badge and the, the pistol gun, the pistol or the cap gun on my hip, you know, and uh, it, you know, somebody told me they wanted to pay me to ride a horse and shoot a gun, and, and uh, and I, and I said, all right, throw a drink and whiskey in there and I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> when I watch your show, I think of the Flaglers. And they have the museums and they brought the train through the Everglades. And when I watch your show, I kind of think of what that must have been like. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. I'm glad you told me that. Uh, I can't, well, yeah, it's one thing building a, a track across the Great Plains. I imagine it would be another building that across a swamp. I, I didn't know that. Uh, well, I asked my... my you know, my parents live in Florida, so I'll ask them about it next time I'm down. There you go. Now, what, what do you guys have coming up next? What are you, Any great things you're working on that we can look forward to, all of your fans here? What's coming up next, actually, is Hell on Wheels Season 2 also. That'll be premiering in August, August 12th. Um, you, which films did you Yeah, uh, my, my, uh, my first producing experience, which I'm also in, Cook County, just uh, hit, came out on DVD this month as well. Uh, and uh, I just finished shooting a, um, a film in Santa Fe uh, called uh, Codename Geronimo about the, the killing of Osama bin Laden. And then I did an independent film called Supremacy. And then I guest starred in a new ABC pilot called Red Widow, which is going to be out in the spring. Wow, you guys are really busy. I'm nothing compared to this guy. This guy's busy, way busier. No, no, but I want to say I, I do have an independent film coming called Love, and I just want to. It's coming in October, and I want to make sure I say it because, um, you know, it's, it, it was in Sundance, and, and you know, because it's, it's an independent, you know, it needs that that exposure. But it's called Love. It's a great film with Danny Glover and Dennis Haysbert, myself, and a young actor named Michael Rainey Jr. And I also want to say to all my people in West Palm because I come to West Palm a lot. Um, man, much love to everybody out there. You know, I definitely got a lot of great friends and family out there. Mark my words, gentlemen. It will be built. Hi, Ivanka. Thanks for being on our show, Palm Beach Rocks. Oh, it's my greatest pleasure. I love Palm Beach. I know you do. And I have to say, Ivanka, it's been a few years since I've seen you. We actually met on the red carpet with uh, Sean Connery's Dress to Kill. Oh, wow. Okay, it's cool. Like, Always yeah. a fun event. So, Ivanka, it's been said so many times that you can never have it all. But, you know, I think in your case, you've proven that very statement to be wrong. Well, that's very kind. I, I think everything's a, a bit of a work in progress, obviously. I was new wife. Uh, I was married uh, around three years ago. And new mother, I had my first baby ten months ago. Um, and just trying to balance um, a great personal life with a meaningful and fulfilling professional life is uh, is is quite a challenge. But um, but there are you know a few tips for how to get that done. <laughs> Good. Now now how does a woman like yourself, so busy, beautiful author, let's add that to it, and you know a fashion icon. I mean, designing all your new things. What is your secret to making it all happen? Well, I think that you have to prioritize efficiently. You have to delegate where possible and, and to capable people. I think you have to manage your life and technology is a great way to do that. I, uh, I partnered recently with Motorola because I've been introduced to their products um, over the years by various friends of mine. and, and it's been very helpful to me to have smartphones that basically um, almost act like personal assistants in terms of managing my agenda and my calendar and, um, and coordinating uh, everything in my life. So 
I'm recently obsessed with uh, the Droid Razer Max, which is a yeah. phone that has 21 hours of talk time prior to the battery dying. So it's rather remarkable. And then there's another Motorola phone that's also ter really special, which is the Droid 4, um, and that has a terrific keypad. So you know, I'm I need the keypad. I've never been good at sort of the point and touch uh, right. form of typing. So you know, uh, there's there's a lot of technology out there that's helped me helped me to juggle better. <laughs> now, let's go on to the next issue, and that's Ivanka. How, how did you get into writing books? And especially the book you just wrote, The Trump Card. Trump Card was a lot of fun for me. Um, I would get numerous letters from young people and from their parents um, while I was on The Apprentice and, and uh, you know, over the course of the last several seasons asking me for basic life advice in the early stages of one's career. And really, you don't have many business books that are geared towards a person who's in their first one, two, three jobs. They tend to be memoirs written from the perspective of normally a man, often 70 years old uh, or older, reflecting back on a long career. And while that's valuable, I think it can be a little less accessible to somebody who's just starting. So I wanted to really speak to that audience and, um, and engage them with some of my observations, both as somebody who's been employed by companies outside of the Trump Organization and now obviously an employer to, to many young people. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us, Ivanka. I can't wait to see the new line and read your book. Do you love coffee or tea like I do? Would you believe you could lose weight drinking it? Well, it's all part of a great event for a great purpose. And I'm here with Peter, and this is our very first Coalition Against Alcohol and Drugs Substance Abuse. So tell us, you're the founder of it. What made you want to start this? Well, I noticed that there were so many young people that mm -hmm. were coming into AA and the 12-step programs. Many of them uh, could not afford to get treatment mm -hmm. for alcohol and substance abuse. Many of them said their insurance wouldn't cover it or they had you know, limitations on it. Uh, plus, uh, the treatment is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And when one of my friends, dear friends, because they had this problem, they couldn't get into a treatment center, they killed themselves. Oh my. And they died from this, I put, it's a disease. Yes, it is a disease. And, and when that happened, I figured something has to be done. Mm -hmm. So, the premise of what we're doing here is to be able to scholarship uh, people young people, as well as adults, who cannot afford to get treatment for drugs and alcohol. So so I feel what, what my thinking here is, the private sector has to step in. Private corporation, private citizens coming forward, we can do this. We can do this. And we're, and we're seeing, and it is happening. Why? Because you're here. That's right. I mean, take a look around at all people the people. Are it's here. an amazing thing. They're here. Peter, it's a wonderful turnout. I'm excited about it, and I love the fact that it's it's not limited to any age. That's right. And Absolutely. I mean, anyone that has a problem out there and they need help, I mean, Peter, this is the go-to place. Yeah. So is there a word for us NBCers? Uh, now that we're all... <laughs> are we on the Peacock Network? Everyone's yes. got their feathers out tonight. <laughs> so now, this is so cool to have you here, but I think it's even more important that this is something that the community can really get involved in. Well, I think what, what we're able to do at News Channel 5 is provide a platform for organizations like the South Florida Coalition uh, Fighting Substance Abuse because, again, it's, it, in this economy where there isn't the money, to help people who need this kind of treatment. It's a very bold step for this group, first of all, to come together, and then second of all, to reach out to the community and say, well, how can the community help us get involved? And what we can do as a media organization is sort of promote it, show people who are success stories, because alcohol and drug abuse affects countless numbers of families. Everybody, all ages, male, female, it doesn't matter. Absolutely, right? and so for us, it's, it's our pleasure uh, for uh, WPTV to be a part of this event, to get out there and to show people that there are groups coming together even in these tough economic times right. to try to fight this problem. Right, come together and there is a number and there is a website that you can go to to get more information on this and no one is alone out there tonight. No, absolutely <laughs> not, this is a great event. Great, thanks so much for coming Thank and you. for being a part of it. 
I love NBC. <laughs> So Robert, tell me, what's your involvement in this? Besides, of course, I know you are already involved in it, but why don't you tell the I'm audience? I'm the director of the uh, South Florida Coalition Against Substance Abuse. I'm the master of ceremonies here tonight. Yeah. And we have a wonderful show uh, with Michael Israel. Now, I know, Michael, that you always surprise me at every event. I never know what to expect, but give me just a little tease about tonight. Oh, it's going to be really boring. Oh, no, well, your shows are never boring. Stop already. <laughs> yeah, well, it's all going to be a surprise. I can't tell you up front what I'm going to do, but uh, it'll be a whole range of things. So each painting will kind of lead into the next one. Oh, wow. Are we doing three tonight? We're doing five. Five? Oh, you are really in for a treat to watch Michael perform out there. And I love the after effects because when everyone realizes what you've painted, it's like, what? How did he do that? How come I never saw that? That's an amazing thing. It's, it's a great time. All right, so doctor, tell us about everything that's going on tonight, because there is just so much excitement here in the room. Well, there is, and you know, we're very fortunate tonight to be invited here and, and help support uh, this foundation. Barisha is the company that we represent. I'm on the medical board for uh, Barisha International. It is the only world's uh, fat-burning coffee that's made. It's a patented blend. It uses natural products, and it allows the body to avoid the storage of fat that's been created by uh, products like caffeine and tea on a natural basis. Now, this just sounds too good to be true. I mean, really. Is, it, is, is this really possible that I could drink three cups of coffee and lose weight? We have people that come that have been in this uh, group with us for you know four to five months and some have lost up to a hundred pounds it's absolutely amazing they've not changed their diet they've not changed their activity level although we do encourage people to exercise oh, as well yeah. but um, the most amazing thing is that we can do something called diet induced thermogenesis which means that what we take in can actually burn fat and not store fat i've done it myself i lost 10 pounds two inches off my waist uh, just drinking coffee drinking tea that's then all you need to do. Is there a limit on how much I drink? You can drink up to three cups a day, morning, lunch, and in the afternoon. My goodness. Well, that's wonderful. And I'm about ready to try it. So okay. I'm up to losing a couple pounds drinking. I drink coffee anyway. Let's get you a cup of coffee. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank you. Smells good. Tell the truth. Do I look thinner? But I just want to say thank you, Robert, for doing this. And Peter, really, this is just an amazing coalition that you've put together. And I just want to say on a personal note that from uh, Rocks World, we would like to be a partner in this donation and giving part of our proceeds to this. So whatever we can do to help is our pleasure. Well, thank you for getting the word out to thousands of people through Palm Beach Rocks. You know, Amanda, it was so exciting to be with you at the Tea Time Classic. That was an exciting event, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. great. And I have to say, it was especially great because we got to share this uh, fabulous award. We yeah. each got our own, of course. I'm really proud of that because it really represents my heart to help the community and young folks that are having difficulty and drug abuse. And I just think it's really, really important to support the youth that are being challenged in this generation. So do we have a surprise for you at the end of the show? That's right, Heidi Klum and her new video. Ooh, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Hey guys, from all of us at Palm Beach Rocks and rocksworld.tv, June 22nd and June 23rd, Don King returns to Hard Rock Live at Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino to bring another world championship fight card back to Florida. And if that's not enough excitement, it's Don King's 80th birthday bash, all at the same time. So come celebrate with Don King and the Hard Rock Casino. I'll be there to help Don blow out the candle. How about you? Rocksworld.tv has just launched, and it isn't just a website. It's a full-fledged network consisting of over seven channels and an online editorial calendar magazine, reaching billions globally. There's all the great celebrities, recipes, and fun interviews you've loved over the past eight years and more. And if this isn't enough, watch for our new dynamic way of shopping online. It's the Lux lifestyle we all love, not just for the rich and famous, but for the world, as in rocksworld.tv. Palm Beach, keep rocking because the world is watching. See you next show.
You're not gonna wanna miss the end of this show. I've got a surprise for you. You know how we love those Victoria's Secret girls. We travel to New York to cover their fashion show week, and then we go to Miami and work with them there. Ah, and we love Heidi Klum. But this time, Heidi, I think you just may lose your wings. Just 